So Lara has been in the health and fitness industry since 2000. During that time, she completed her social work degree, majoring in mental health and addiction psychology. She has worked as a therapist in a private practice specializing in depression and anxiety management, which has been beneficial to the work she delivers as a personal trainer and nutrition coach. She is passionate about helping people discover the benefits of moving more moving more, eating well, managing stress, and enjoying life. Um, Lara, thank you again for joining us. Um, we're, you know, we talked about mental health with uh, Tony Raba, which is yeah. fantastic, and he's, uh, he runs an amazing organization. I wanted to bring you straight afterwards because you run an amazing um, fitness uh, gym, if, uh, and uh, MaxFit does a lot of great things, and especially has that amazing link with uh, mental health and, yeah. uh, and fitness. So yeah. why is it so important uh, for small business owners uh, to manage their stress uh, these days? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, obviously chatting before, like with Tony, was it was a great, like what he's doing is fantastic. And I guess we had a very similar um, vision for how we could support those in the community. So, as you mentioned, uh, my background is in mental health social work, worked a lot with um, addictions and eating disorders and um, saw a lot in that process and I've worked privately um, as a practitioner as well. And one of the things that we were noticing more and more of is that sort of like that individualization of things. So people having to kind of go it alone and not having the resources or the community or the connection. So we wanted to um, bring, I guess, a space or a place where people can um, meet and train develop good habits around nutrition um, and the main issue that we were seeing with people was that the stress levels were so high. And so mm. the issue with that, and I mean, I guess I'm going to come at it from more of a holistic approach, but stress is um, a part of everyone's life. I mean, of course, it's it can be a chronic condition, uh, but if we learn to manage it well and 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 use the resources that we learn across, you know, along the way, we will actually be able to manage it to a point where it becomes productive rather than chronic, mm -hmm. um, resulting in further health issues, especially around mental health. What happens in stress is that our bodies are designed to manage a certain amount of stress. So if we go back mm -hmm. evolutionary, uh, we were built uh, with a fight-flight response and that's um, – around the HPA axis, which is your hypothalamus, your pituitary gland. Uh, hypothalamus is kind of working out, you know, what's going on and it's feeding back to our bodies how we need to either manage in a, you know, a sympathetic state in terms of hyping up and getting ready to fight or flight if there's a threat in place or parasympathetic where it's going to, you know, calm ourselves down, get us ready to rest and digest. Uh, and, and ideally we would like to be in that rest and digest state but it is okay to be in that sympathetic state where we are kind of more hyped up. The problem is, and as Tony was mentioning before, like when you are living and working in small business, mm -hmm. we obviously, it's it, like he said, it's the two are meshed tiny together. So you're living yeah. with your family, your friends, your relationships, but at the side you've got this business that never really switches off. <laughs> and I like to kind never. of think of it, yeah, I kind of think of it like computers, you know, when your computer's open and you've got all yeah. these tabs happening. Well, small business is kind of like that. Instead of having like one tab, you've probably got about five or six tabs open. Mm, you've got the it is. Open, and then you've got like the financial repayments and all these tabs. And the more tabs we have open, the more our brain is sort of processing. Yeah. And that processing our body perceives as a threat. So that axis that I was talking about, um, it's receiving all this information and it's like I've got to do something about all these tabs that are open, so I'm going to move into this sort of fight-flight response. And so you might notice things like that upregulation of heartbeat, the clammy hands. Um, some people talk about shortness of breath, getting dizzy, uh, might feel that like kind of nauseous feeling in the tummy or needed to go to the toilet more, could be off your food, could make you want to eat more. So all of these things are signs that we're in a, a state of stress and I think we need to be careful because if that state goes on for long enough, we can actually move into a state of chronic stress. Um, and that, that is largely to the fact because the body isn't designed to remain in fight flight for long periods of time. So what you might start to notice is that that is harder to switch off, that response, because the cortisol levels and the adrenal levels are so the adrenal's pumping, cortisol's pumping. We can't kind of bring it down, so we get a little bit, yeah. you know, 
fatigued. So you might notice things like mood changes. Um, you might find it harder to get to sleep at night or waking up during sleep and not being able to go back to sleep. Uh, obviously, like your diet is um, probably affected. You might notice that you're either, like I said, eating more or less. Mm. Um, and I think one of the most chronic conditions that we've actually seen is that you get the metabolic issues. So you might notice, you know, insulin resistance, weight gain, especially yeah. in the middle. Um, you might start feeling chronic back pain or pain within the legs. Um, like there's a whole range of things. Uh, yeah. But like Tony mentioned before, it's that mental health state as well. So once that body, like it's almost like the serotonin levels I'm not going to go too much into the mental health side of things, but sometimes those neurotransmitters are affected and it's very yeah. hard to re-regulate them without sometimes, you know, pharmacotherapy or, you know, counselling therapy. So I think, you know, we want to try and help people, with, you know, before they get to that state. And so a lot of the work that we do here is around that. Mm. So, yeah. What, what would you do then if people are on that state because there is a lot of small business owners that are already on that state. I'm guilty I'm not yeah, yeah. to a certain extent. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But yeah, um, it, it's, it, it really is something that I guess a lot of small business owners struggle with. And yeah, you know, absolutely. Uh, and I'm, I'm one point. of them too. Like, yeah. there you go. <laughs> I, there you, I, go. I, I, you know, there are days obviously where mm. um, I'm feeling that that sort of that response in my system and I sort yeah. of feel it a little bit in a heart rate and shortness of breath. That's my first sign. Guilty. Yes. I'm guilty too, yes. 100%. So that's nothing to really fear if it's not ongoing. Hmm. But if that is ongoing, that's when we start hmm. to get worried. And as well okay. as if you start to notice those disturbances. So what we would tend to do is if we have someone coming in and they're saying, look, I'm actually starting to find that I'm putting on a bit of weight I'm losing my motivation and enjoyment for things. My sleep and appetite slightly affected. I'm not really sure what to do. We will start to encourage, like, I guess the three main things would be trying to find a way to get adequate sleep because sleep is like kind mm. of foundation. So if you're hitting at four to five hours sleep, which a lot of small business owners are doing because it's like how do you fit, you know, especially if you're a small business owner with a family and yeah. you're trying to like manage your kids as well and you've got to get them to sport and pick them up from school, whatever else it is. And, you know, provide Three under six. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, good luck with the sleep. I was like, I'm saying this and I was up at four in the morning with two. Look at the eyes. Yeah, Look yeah, at the yeah. eyes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, sleep, obviously, it's never going to be perfect. But the idea of, for example, switching off maybe at like 10 o'clock instead of 12 o'clock or even if you want to just bring it back yeah. one hour and give yourself one extra hour at night, like that can sometimes be enough. Um, so sleep, the next one I would probably recommend would be to try and move more. So get some exercise in if you can. Mm. And that, like, you know, like little steps, like if you've got an Apple Watch or even if you just carry your phone with you, if you don't have a watch, it will monitor your steps. And then you can have a look and see at the end of the day where you're up to. And, I mean, if you're serious about, you know, getting better and staying healthy and well, movement's actually going to be probably one of the best things you can do. And it will help you sleep better. So we've got endorphins that are being released during any type of exercise. You're also giving, bringing your body back into a parasympathetic state when mm. you're you know, doing walking or if you're lifting weights or Pilates or whatever else it is that you want to choose to do. You, you're releasing those endorphins, which is helping bring your body back into a nice calm state. Um, and then the last one I suppose would be nutrition. Mm. Um, nutrition is an interesting one because I think one of my biggest issues is that we live in such a diet culture and we have been programmed to think that less is more yeah. and that we have to constantly restricting what we're eating to be able to achieve the body that we want when mm. actually the opposite is true. And so uh, a lot of the education that I'm doing, especially with a lot of clients who have developed eating disorder behaviour, is around changing their mentality, mentality around food um, mm. and what it actually means to fuel your body for performance. When I say performance, I mean performing in life. So yeah. pre like performing in a business, um, managing yeah. all the tasks that you need to do in a day. You're not going to do that on a restricted diet basically yeah not feeling tired lethargic yeah. all those things like uh, uh, the second you go into a diet mode lordy yeah. 
it all comes out. Oh, I'll tell you that much. And the hangry, um, the hangry, yeah, yeah, exactly, hangry, and nobody get, nobody gets um, uh, the nutrition that they need, yeah. and they yeah. end up yeah. So it's a it's a it's a tough one. So in terms in saying, I, was, I wanted to add something. I mean, uh, for for that movement part, yeah. I think a lot of small business owners have forgotten how to play their favorite sports. I just rediscovered my favorite sport and I'm play, playing basketball again. Oh, that's I'm feeling so-, so much better these days yeah. <laughs> just because of that. So I think I want to mention that. I want, I want to just say, you know, to the, the audience, you know, if you yeah. have a favorite sport, just go out and play. It doesn't matter if you're old or, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Young, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Just, just go get some movement, isn't it? And, uh, and also book a physio appointment for when. Okay. <laughs> 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 Don't that's forget, awesome. we're coming, no, we're, I totally agree. I haven't we're gone coming. yet, but that's a yes. good point. <laughs> well, no, it's only because we're coming from, you know, strength and conditioning background where, um, yes. you know, we're seeing a lot of people coming in injured because they haven't actually got to a point where their body's able to move and then they smash it into a sport. So my recommendation would be if you want to go play basketball, soccer, hockey, touch, whatever it is, the things that yeah. you love, squash is a big one actually. Yeah. If you want to go play any of those sports, you really should because it's sort of bringing yeah. out that like inner child in you and that enjoyment that's, and those are the things that are going to help. Exactly that's exactly what's happened. Health. Yeah, yeah that, that's exactly what's happened to me. So yeah. I just yes, can't I can see that inner really, child. Like, really enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> really enjoying it. I think I'm also more enjoying that we're beating all these younger kids than us and I'm like, yeah. yes, <laughs> even better. Not so at all though. No. Sorry? No, not, not at all. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely. no, but I think it's a great opportunity to do that. I think just yeah. ease yourself into it. And if you are wanting to go back into the sports like that, maybe yeah. go for a bit of a run here and there just to ease yourself back in, give yourself a good warm-up routine so you're not going to yeah. injure yourself. Stretch um, But definitely look into it. It's so good. Sport is phenomenal, you know. And, yeah. Yeah. I, I was just going to say that. Um, so I, I love my fitness and exercise, mm. except I just love eating as much. So I'm going to admit to that. <laughs> well, <you laughs> but know, that's because good, that's yeah, because we want to, like I said, we want to fuel our bodies um, to be able to do the things that we love, including staying on top of things in our businesses. Yeah, and and, and I think part of the thing is I know that when I'm feeling fit and healthy, I feel better able to make the decisions and manage the workload that I have in the business. Yeah, fantastic. So how can exercise then ease the stress level, uh, Lara? Yeah, so what happens with exercise is, like I said before, we I'll show you like the few little things that you can even just do at your desk. I mean, I'm not sure everyone's got different businesses and some of you are out on the road, some of you are like doing a lot of manual kind of labour, but um, some of the stretches that we incorporate um, – you know, into the routine for some of our clients have been really beneficial. And we've also Mm. noticed, like, I'll just show you, if when you're sitting at a desk, I'm just going to bring this down a little, when you're sitting at a desk, often what you'll find is that you are hunched into this position. Mm. And when you're in that position, what tends to happen is that the muscles here in your pectorals get shorter and they sort of constrict that back and they bring that back into that kyphotic or like to the rounded state. And so these muscles here, we're trying to like, open the back up, open up the mm. chest. So I've got okay. my lovely model here. This is Jono. Yeah. This is Jono. Hey, guys. Hey, hey Jono. And Jono, I'm going to just talk you through a couple of stretches that um, that we use. So the first stretch um, is probably there's two ways you can do this stretch. The first one with arms outstretched. So say this is your desk or a bench, depending on where you are. If you have your arms outstretched into this position yep. and you're just leaning over into the desk, into the stretch, this is actually going to open up through your chest and through that lower back. So if you're getting pain, yep. if you're thinking that you're getting pain kind of around this area in the day, like up through the neck, this is actually going to really help to open that up. And if okay. you're noticing this, if you see we're opening that right up into that position. So this is a good one. If you want to go even harder, this is the next one. This is the next <laughs> way you can look into this. Okay. So see how we've just got a little bit more... Ah, uh, yes. At the I edge of that, that there, yes. Yeah. So we've got that, yeah. those muscles are really opening up. Yeah, right? that looks good. And just holding that stretch, you know, probably for about 10 seconds and then release, go yep. back for 10 seconds and release. It really doesn't take you long. And mm. the benefits that you'll get are incredible. Like we had one, one of our patients, clients, sorry, in particular, she had this hyperkyphosis like yep. this. And now she's standing upright That's because right. she's regularly practicing that stretch. 
You're so, making me want to stand up, right, sit yes. up right too right now. <laughs> of that, the next stretch is a chest opening yeah. stretch. So, John, okay. show us. You're just like interlacing the hands at the back and you're yep. really wanting to feel that you're squeezing between like the upper, the scaps uh, here, this, yep. shoulder blades. So you're squeezing between there and you're actually like tilting the chest up. So you're lifting mm. the chest up towards the ceiling and yep. then you either look straight ahead or if you want to involve the neck, you just look up. So you're looking up into that position. Now this type of a stretch, so we have a vagus nerve, which is responsible, it's a cranial nerve that is responsible for helping to calm the body into that parasympathetic state. When you do a stretch like that and moving through the neck is actually mm. helping to release that parasympathetic state. Don't, don't you feel good, Jono? Yeah. yeah, see, it feels yeah. great. <laughs> Thanks, Jono. That was amazing. So those are two really, really good yeah. stretches that you can do, um, just like wherever you are at any time. Yeah. Another one as well is because sometimes with our hips, I don't know if people notice, but you have a hip flexor that runs just through here. And those hip flexors can get really tight if they're constantly in that contracted state. So the, yep. another hip stretch for your hip flexor is just to move into a side stretch and that's going to through your hip flexor, through your obliques and your QL. So all through the side here, it's just going to open up and then on the other side. So this is another yep. nice one. You'll notice again, deep breathing into these stretches are really going to mm. help to release that parasympathetic state, which is what, what you want to be in relaxation. Yeah, with, just move through yeah. that as you need to. Yeah, you know, with stretches, a lot of people don't know how to take their time with it. I find they kind of rush it. Like do you this. find that? Do you guys find it a lot? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm always yeah, like, because we also uh, run Pilates, so yeah. Pilates is all about bringing in that parasympathetic state again. So yeah. what the issue that we get is like people kind of r rushing through. I'm like, okay, everybody yeah. slow, stick with me. We're going to just, <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. I think. I think the other point, again, in what I do with Pilates is we're trying to slow the breath. Mm. So, if we, the can, part. Yeah, so mm. if we can say to the body, we're actually okay, we don't need to be stressing, yeah. we're actually okay, yeah. and slowing the breath down actually signals to the body that, and to the mind that we're okay and it'll actually slow your state. Yeah. So with a deep breath, um, I'll just show you what it looks like. We're not breathing through the diaphragm. We're actually breathing through the rib cage, so the intercostal muscles of the ribs are going to open right up. So deep breath in, take okay. a deep breath in, feel opening up through the ribs, and then you slowly breathe out. Now, don't worry too much about count for 10 seconds, count for four. Just listen to your body and relax into the state of yeah. you know, thinking about opening up that chest, getting as much air as you can in. Once okay. you do that, you're opening up the lungs, you're getting the surface area to volume ratio much like bigger so that you get the mm. blood vessels moving around, picking up as much oxygen as possible, taking them through to the muscles and allowing the body to relax. So it's actually, it's not just take a deep breath. Yeah. It, this is actually scientifically proven to calm the body down and get you out of that stress state to keep you, you know, at a point where you can able to function and think clearly. Amazing. Yeah. Lara, thank you so much for joining me today. What a fantastic okay. demo and, you know, such great insight on what to do there for a lot of small business owners are really going through some tough times. Yeah. Yes. yes things are still are opening up, um, but we want to build that resilience yeah. and, you know, mental health health is super, super important for them. And that's why we, uh, we wanted to have you here as a guest and yes. hopefully we can have you at the next summit as well. So that's, great. Thanks looking for forward to it. that's all right. Have a, have a good one. Take care. Yeah. Bye.